So our uh, first presenter, I think uh, uh, Eric Sachs, you can uh, um, already go to your place while I um, uh, say a few words. Uh, um, I'm very happy uh, you are here. Um, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, and of course, uh, as it, you see the interaction on the screens, um, of course, uh, this is all according to the uh, actual um, uh, uh, valid uh, hygienic rules. Uh, of course, we all take care. We keep a distance uh, physically, but uh, it's, it's really good uh, to have you here um, and to discuss later on. Um, and now to hear your presentation, uh, let me say a few words about uh, Professor Dr. Eric Sachs. Uh, he's head of the Institute of Information Processing Technology at the Karlsruhe Institute uh, of Technology short KIT. Um, in addition, you are director uh, at the uh, Research Center for Informatik, Forschungszentrum Informatik, FZI, I think uh, internationally known, and of course at, this, uh, at the Hector School, this is the technology business school uh, of the KIT. Um, and you have been working very, very long, uh, a lot of uh, years. You have uh, at the moment currently, I think, yeah, 50 PhD employees, which is a very impressive number. Um, uh, and you're all working on process methods uh, and tools in systems engineering. Um, yeah, and of course, the, the, the whole idea of EE development, uh, um, yeah, you bring uh, not only your, uh, uh, your, uh, your university experiences, of course, you have a lot of years' experiences in industry. Uh, uh, you worked for Daimler Buses, you worked for MB Tech Group. Uh, so, um, actually, we are really, really happy to have you here as an expert, and I'm looking forward uh, at first to your presentation and later on uh, to your discussion. Um, uh, before you start, a few words uh, to our viewers about the, the, the opportunities to participate. You all already logged in into our MIA platform. This is the event platform we are using today. So. Uh, the first step you already taken, um, and uh, of course uh, you see a, a chat uh, um, for Q and A's uh, in in this platform. So if you have any questions to the presenters, please uh, put them in this chat, and we will take them later on in the podium discussion. Um, and uh, a second uh, opportunity to participate is our wall of ideas. If you happen to visit our booth two years ago in Hannover, we had this large wall which was empty at Monday on Monday, uh, and it's uh, yeah some sort of collaborative art project. So a lot of people could write something down, uh, some uh, people draw some very funny, interesting things on it. Uh, so we tried to put this in a virtual form. Uh, so uh, this is the wall of ideas um, uh, so you can put your ideas on and uh, I'm yeah very excited to see um, uh, what the result of this wall of ideas will be at the end uh, of uh, these three days um, and uh, yeah if you are not um, uh, uh, if you are not uh, able to follow the whole program uh, of the next three days of course uh, you can uh, see uh, the different presentations and discussions uh, afterwards in our YouTube stream, Immobile BW, you should see a link on the platform uh, to this. So now our presenter uh, is uh, supplied with uh, some water, uh, and this uh, is from my side. Um, Eric Sachs, the word to you. I'm very happy you're here, and I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much so far, Mr. Fischer. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the chance to be here virtually at the Hannover Mess Fair. And um, yeah, one thing in advance, I hope you can see the slides. There I'm announced as the head of the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. This, of course, is a funny thing. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really the head of the Karlsruhe Institute, the KIT. I'm head of the Institute for Information Processing technology and I recognize if I knew that the background is is uh, uh, beige it's gray as well I, I would have heard other jacket but anyway I hope you can see me and I hope you can hear me yeah what I what will I talk about um, the topic is architectures software architectures in vehicles and to, to understand what is currently going on I think you have to go back to history and I go back to history 
20 years ago. When I started at Mercedes, I, I was once delivering to the rain sensor. The rain sensor is shown here. In the middle, you see an electronic control unit. On the left, you can see the mirror and the integration of the sensor behind the windscreen. On the right, you can see the Viper, and it's a closed loop. The Viper cleans the sensor, and it's a autonomous, it's an individual system. So what we have is a sensor, an ECU that realizes the function, and an actuator, the Viper, and the frequency and the Viper speed. <clears throat> and this, you had the chance to buy at a tier one delivery. Yeah, stepwise. Year by year, this kind of integration grew, and in the end, we have a kind of wild zoo of different ECUs. This is a signal oriented approach. The CAN uh, was the protocol to put that into realization, to communicate from sensors to actuators. And uh, so, stepwise, one after the other, we integrated these ECUs from different suppliers that you all know, tier ones, tier twos, into the vehicle. And the integration task was more and more a challenge. So at a certain point, we recognized that it makes sense to have a cluster of domains. To cluster domains and say, OK, look here, it is a high speed challenge. We are in a powertrain area, for example or we are in a body uh, area where we have seats, heating, and not really real-time requirements. Furthermore, we had upcoming the idea of assistance systems, driver assistance systems. You can recognize that on the right top part. And stepwise, we recognize it gets more and more difficult not when we integrate a park assistant. But the moment we want to combine a lane keep assist with an automated uh, distance control to a highway pilot, we recognize, ah, does this still work on the signal-oriented level of integration? So I already pointed out that we had a growth of sensing a growth of capturing the environment. Ultrasonic was the first. I already mentioned the parking. But ultrasonic is slow and uh, it is cheap, of course. And stepwise, we integrated radar. Who thought that radar 10 years ago had such an overwhelming success in vehicles? LIDAR. We still say LIDAR is too expensive. We have the cameras to capture everything around. 360 degrees around, we talk about bird view or something like that. And now we come to a point where it's very difficult to integrate like the old fashioned way, to integrate one ECU after the other. Because it's, it's difficult to do it like that because we, we get a kind of Warthog. I looked up the term, Warthog is in German Watzenschwein, more and more sensing, more and more antennas, and that does not work. So we double everything for each function. And therefore, we need something that covers on abstract level the environment. And therefore, we have a fused environment. We now say, OK, it's important to put all the information I can get from the traffic, from the other vehicles, from the environments, onto the vehicle and fuse this information with all the sensing. And then we need a system, a functions-oriented view to cover that all. And then the new chances of level four, level five, automated driving come in. In the end, we have to realize that on physical layers, on physical levels, and still currently mainly in domain controllers. And I pushed the wrong button. I apologize for the little delay. And in addition, we open the vehicle. And we say, now we have the chance to communicate with a cloud, whatever cloud is, um, to communicate in a way we talk about 
car to X, vehicle to X, and X might be another vehicle, might be a back end, might be a roadside unit, and we think about a lot of these ideas of updates over the air. So sending information from a satellite, from a station, from a back end to the vehicle in order to fix bugs, to enhance the functionality, or to improve the functionality and optimize things that you might have honestly forgotten during the engineering phases. In addition, why don't you think about a situation where you say, hey, do I really need such a lot of ECUs in a vehicle? I'm not absolutely familiar with the number of ECUs in the new S-Class of Mercedes, but some say we nearly reach the 200 margin. So why don't we put functions in addition into the cloud? And there we can even have self-learning abilities. There we can have a control over the air of vehicles in an area that might not be too safety relevant. And of course we know that the moment we do that, we open uh, a gate. We open a gate that demands for new ways of security mechanisms. But the idea to save money that way, to save easy use in the vehicle, wiring in the vehicle, and, and, and have this fleet of vehicles that learn and improve functions in the back end, this idea is, is, is really, really a hot topic. So we differentiate between the logical and the physical architecture and level. And uh, next optimization step. When you talk to the premium OEMs, they currently talk about zones. They want to save wiring. They say really regional zones in a vehicle. And we do this as well and say, OK, uh, we have zones here that realize parts or complete functions. And recognizing that idea, you will soon come to a point where you say signal orientation. Where you really have to define, by the way, again, a number that is not proof, but I tell you that, 30,000 signals in the new s class. And if you want to manage this on a signal level and you want to be flexible for improving, for updates or functionality enhancements, it makes sense to put on this high level of integration or fusion a service-oriented approach. Services we know, client-server architectures, we know from the, your, your office building, your, your printer works like that, your common database works, works like that, and you are much more flexible the moment you do it like that. And this is what we call then a hybrid architecture. Why hybrid? Yeah, because the service orientation is not the only thing. Talking to your management in industry and say, hey, I, 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 I've heard a nice talk, and, and we realize now from, from scratch everything in service orientation. They say, are you mad? Because uh, you have proved quality. A window lifter is a window lifter is a window lifter. And, and this is still the signal oriented, the signal oriented uh, way how to develop. So hybrid, because you have to add, you have to mix now the service orientation and you have to mix the signal orientation because you want to save what you've done before. And this is a challenge. And of course, scream your work on that and, and uh, Autosar to mention one, is working on that, to save what you've done before, the way of thinking, the competencies you have in your engineering uh, departments, and to mix that. And this is then the next uh, hot topic. It's the carts. It's the components of the shelf that you want to reuse. And this was the effort of the last 10 years, reuse, and do not invent the wheel twice. The moment you have this hybrid architecture, you can ask yourself, is that enough? How do you handle what I already mentioned? How do you handle the over-the-air communication? Is that signal-oriented? Is that another way? Is this what you know from uh, commercial um, gadgets like a handheld? How does it work in the end? So uh, you need even a universal architecture in the end. And uh, in addition, you have, you have the infrastructure. You have the 
parking areas, for example, they have already an infrastructure. You have to communicate with roadside units and they are sending signals as well, like here in that example, a traffic light system. So what is the architecture of the future? It's neither white or black, it's a mixture. And an ideal way how you can put that is to say, okay, it's something where we have in the end a plug and play approach. Of course, I know that the realization of such a, such a visionary thought takes a long breath and needs a lot of efforts. But in the end, for the reasons I've mentioned, we need these universal architectures with different sections, with different parts. And the idea again is to put sliders on. Okay, sliders again are naive to a certain point, but this is how you have to realize that. Because you can't solve the problems of a premium level five vehicle with the solutions you have from, for a volume vehicle. You have to differentiate between a Golf and an A8 or something, to mention another um, brand as well. <clears throat> so, and these sliders allow now to reuse a lot of the cards, to include a lot of infrastructure, maybe for vehicles of communality or of, of companies, and to have this over-the-air communication idea. And of course, and this is the important thing, and this is really a thing where we have to change thinking is the service orientation because otherwise we will not be able to handle the automated driving on that safety and security level. And this is my message and this is my message for the uh, discussion in the podium afterwards. And uh, hopefully you use the online chance for further questions as announced by Wolfgang Fischer and I'm, I'm keen on answering or maybe I don't have an answer then keen on discussing your questions with you. Thank you very much. So thank you very much uh, Professor Eric Sachs. Um, yeah, we have a little, a bit of time left. Uh, so, so just one, one short question before we, the, the, the rest we, we, we take in the, in the discussion. But um, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, you have a lot of uh, experience in the industry. You are now working uh, in the research area. So, so for the, for the smaller companies, uh, as you, you explained a lot of our universal architecture, of course. Uh, um, a lot of the companies in, in Baden-Württemberg, they are very much specialized on, on one or two components. What does it mean for them? Uh, what is the challenge for, for, for them according to the, to the, to the uh, universal architectures? Yeah, so on the one hand, honestly, really honestly, it's the, the staff you have. Mm -hmm. It's the qualification of the people. They are highly skilled, but now they have to move that, that skills to a new topic. They have to move that to the new challenges. And this, this is really, this is a transformation. And this transformation um, takes place. And uh, Franz Logan pointed out that the state of Baden-Württemberg is very much uh, pushing towards that direction. And, and there, there, honestly, again, uh, the fast will eat the fat. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fat must think about that and yeah. must change. Otherwise, they will shipwreck. Okay. <laughs> So far, my my opinion on that. <laughs> so this this is in a, uh, this in a nutshell. So thank you very much for for now. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I think we talk later in the discussion. Uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, points. I think uh, we can discuss with the other two presenters. Uh, so I'm looking forward uh, to later. But for now, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Uh,